If you've been thinking about picking up an ASRock motherboard, you'll likely want to know how good the RGB software is before you buy. Meet ASRock Polychrome. And as part of my RGB Explain mini series, which I will have linked below for you, we're going to be continuing with a deep dive analysis of ASRock Polychrome's features, lighting effects, bugs, and overall usability. And of course, we're going to be doing this for literally all PC RGB software, with roundups at the end based on category, to find out which RGB software is the best. So continuing with ASRock Polychrome, let's find out if this is at least better than Gigabyte RGB Fusion. So in these videos, we answer some really important questions that you literally just can't find the answer to anywhere else. What the effects actually look like. Is there a max number of LEDs that you can use within an effect? And about 15 other questions with new ones being added based on your feedback, like what lights actually stay on when the computer goes to sleep. That was a great question that somebody had in the comments section. So if I don't answer any questions that you may have, please comment them below and I will try my best to include them. But these questions are really quite important to me and apparently to you guys too, not just for your own builds, but to recommend to friends as well. So I split these videos up into a few main sections. The test system and how the lighting is configured from a hardware perspective because this will determine how the lighting will flow throughout the system. Then we move on to the software features including the top questions you didn't even know that you needed the answer to. Before we then move into the bugs and the poor usability elements. And then of course we will cover the effects, what they look like both inside and outside of the system, covering multiple different devices. So let me show you our test system and why these random RGB strips are here like that. So what I'll do is I'll detail and link all of the hardware in the video description for you, as most of the components actually have nothing to do with this video. But the things that are relevant for this video in terms of RGB and lighting is we have the ASRock C590PG Velocitor motherboard. That'll be controlling most of the RGB in the system other than the graphics card and the memory. They're their own individual components. But then we have the G-Skill Enki 360 pump block with the Arctic Bionics P120 ARGB fans. And in terms of GPU, we have the ASRock Phantom Gaming 6600 XT. As far as 6600 XTs go, that is a beast of a card. As well as the G-Skill Trident Z Neos, this is a 4x8 gig kit, all wrapped inside this Lian Li Lancol 2 mesh, a very pretty system. But we also need to talk about how the connected RGB devices are actually wired up, because this will determine how the lighting will flow throughout the case. As I mentioned in the last video, I'd update you of any changes in the configuration of the lighting setup, and fortunately, there are none. We have one addressable RGB header being split two ways, one way going to all of the addressable RGB fans that daisy chain together starting at this rear exhaust and then all the way down to the front bottom. It's essentially one connected device at that point. The other side of that splitter is actually being sent to this addressable RGB strip. The reason being is so that you can see how an effect will display on both the fans and a strip simultaneously. We have a second addressable RGB header being split two ways again. One way to the G-Skill Enki pump block and the other side of it is actually being sent to this accent lighting running along the top and down the side of this case. And then finally we have one non-addressable RGB header being split two ways again. One side going to this non-addressable RGB strip and the other side actually being sent behind this radiator, which is again somewhere that I would actually put it in a case. So as always, I'm going to keep this set up as close as reasonably possible to keep the comparisons fair and I will update you with any changes. But now let's have a look and see if Azrock Polychrome is any good. So this is the main screen of ASRock Polychrome, the software that ASRock have created to allow you to customize your RGB for your motherboard and connected compatible devices. The version is 2.0.89. And I'm going to go over the most important questions and features that you should have with any RGB software before we then take a look at the usability and any bugs that I find. So this is the main screen when you launch the application. And at the moment, we're essentially in motherboard control land. So we have select all channels down here, which is allowing us to control our IO cover, PCH, RGB strip one, RGB strip two, ARGB strip one, and ARGB strip two. These two are grayed out, which is audio and PCB, because this motherboard hasn't implemented RGB in those sections. So at the moment, we have select all channels highlighted, but if we click on any one of these components, we can change the mode independently from the other connected devices. So we can change this ARGB strip to off, and then we'll go back to rainbow. So having this will link all of the connected devices, and then you can change the colors there. So question number one is how many effects do you actually have? 
Well here we're controlling the motherboard and all the connected devices. So that be the fans, the RGB strips, everything apart from the GPU and the memory. And we have 14 different effects, not including off. But if you do something like link the DRAM or the graphics card, you'll end up losing six effects here. The six that you lose are music, wave, scan, cram, stack, spring, and water. I will go through the effects with you in a bit more detail a bit later on in the video. When it comes to the graphics card, we also have 14 different effects. We lose music, but we also gain rainbow two. The next question that I want to cover is, can you stack the effects? Say have a static white, but then fade in a breathing blue for example, and you can't do that, unfortunately. You cannot stack the effects in any of the connected devices. So then the next question is, can you make custom user effects or customize the effects within this software? Say change direction, and the answer is no. You unfortunately don't get advanced effect editing within Azure Polychrome, but you do of course get speed control within many of these compatible effects. Something like static won't have speed control, of course. Something like breathing will. And if you have speed control, you have about 100 different levels of speed control right here, which is kind of crazy, but in a good way. And that's the same for brightness control right here. If you have brightness control, you have about 100 different levels of brightness control just there. And also if the effect allows you to edit the color, you can do that using this color wheel right here, which in theory gives you access to about 16.7 million colors. So then the next most important question that I have is, can you assign the amount of LEDs within an effect? And the answer to that is you can, and that's so important and really cool feature, which I'll show you here. So if we change this over to a white, and then go over to addressable RGB LED one, change this to cram, for example. So as you'll remember before, this RGB LED strip and these fans are connected via a splitter. So LED one through 26, I believe. And here is LED one through to all the way down to the bottom, which is about 70 something. So if I go down here to addressable LED number and say, reduce that to 50, you'll see what happens, which is that the effect stops right there at this LED. Now this is a fantastic feature because I can tell the software how many LEDs I have and the effect will span the amount of LEDs that I have in my system properly. Because if you don't have that feature, you'll have to duplicate the effect at different intervals, which will look like this. This is Gigabyte's implementation of it, which I think looks objectively worse. So I'm really happy to tell you that in Azure Polychrome, you can assign the amount of LEDs within an effect. And when it comes to the maximum amount of LEDs that you can have, the limit is 100 in software right there. You cannot exceed that. So the next question that I have is, can you calibrate the output? As in, tell the red channel it's blue, tell the blue channel it's green, etc. And unfortunately, you can't do that. You do have addressable RG swap, which seems to swap the channels. Not entirely sure what this is meant to be doing in terms of the swap. Next up is profiles. Can you give your profile to a friend or import your friend's profile into your own system? The answer is unfortunately not. There's no way to import or export profiles. But in terms of special integrations, ASRock have actually done a really good job with this. Now what we mean by special integrations is linking with other software and devices. And you'll see right here, Chroma Connect. So if I go onto there, go Chroma Connect, and then over onto here, and then go Razor Synapse. And here you'll see that we have some really advanced effects and effect editing within Chroma Studio, which is a great integration to see. And I will do a full review of Razor Chroma in a separate video. When it comes to GPU support, you have native support for all compatible ASRock GPUs right here. We will give ASRock the benefit of the doubt because this GPU is actually a 6600 XT, not an RX 590, but it is only about a week old. So maybe they're just trying to get through a few issues. And when it comes to memory support right here, with support for G-Skill, HyperX, Patriot, T-Force, XPG, and Oloy, but not Corsair or Ballistics. And when it comes to controlling the memory, you don't have individual module control, but you do have 13 different effects that you'll find right here. Again, I'll go into the effects a bit later on in this video. But what about when your computer goes to sleep? If you have your computer in your room, do you really want that disco light show going off in your face? So what lights actually stay on? And I'm happy to tell you that the memory and the motherboard stayed on, but no other connected devices. So this will give you a nice glow, but nothing too crazy. But the next question is, can you avoid the software altogether? Now there's two different ways that you could potentially do this. Number one is to go into the BIOS and set it. And number two is to uninstall the software. So number one, in the BIOS, you do actually have access to ASRock Polychrome in a lot of compatible motherboards. So this is the BIOS screen of the motherboard that we've been using throughout this entire video. And you have a really nice visualizer to be able to control the effects. And this is a BIOS screen for my editing PC, which gives you a drop down list to be able to change the effect. And what that means is that if you want to set it in BIOS, you don't even need to download and install ASRock Polychrome, which is a really nice feature to see. You just have a bit more limited 
under control. Otherwise, let's see if it will keep these effects after uninstalling the software. So we're actually going to be doing this live. We'll exit there, we'll go programs, And as you can see here, we have uninstalled Azrock Polychrome. It has so far retained the effects. So what I'm gonna do is stop recording and then reboot the computer. There we go, it does retain the effects. Welcome to the usability and bug section. At this point of the video, you'll know if Azure Polychrome has the features you value, but that's only really half of the question. So in this section, I talk about some of the things that I don't like and also some of the things that are just broken from a software perspective. But also bear in mind that this is a best case scenario. This is a fresh install of Windows 10 with nothing else installed that's not relevant for this testing. So especially when it comes to bugs, if there's any that I see, it's a pretty significant failure. So let's start with the first usability issue that I want to show you guys, which actually isn't inside Azure Polychrome. So what we're gonna do is exit out of the application and close it in our system tray to then go over here onto the desktop. This is the first usability issue that I have. Let's say if we put this in the recycle bin and we go to actually launch Azrock Polychrome, you'll see that I don't actually get the application. The reason being is because Azrock Polychrome is not called Azrock Polychrome. It's called ASR RGB LED, which really should be fixed because I've installed Azrock Polychrome I'm going to search for it as if it's called Azure Polychrome. So then the second usability thing that I want to highlight is this, the Detecting Peripherals LEDs controller, and also that very um, confidence-inducing command prompt window, that needs to go, and the Detecting Peripherals LED controller needs to be better at its job because it often doesn't detect stuff like the GPU or the memory, which I think is a pretty significant failure because it's an Azure GPU, although it is only a week old, so we might give them the benefit of the doubt for that. But the memory is Trident Z Neos, which is one of the most popular memory modules on the market. So this time over, we're fortunate enough to actually get the memory and the graphics card, but it's about a one in five chance that it won't recognize it and you'll have to exit and relaunch the application or worse over, reboot the entire system. And speaking of issues, I am actually having a real issue with my graphics card. Not only does it think that it's a Radeon RX 590, even though it's a 6600 XT, it also doesn't update with any of the effects that I tell it to. Now it is only a week old, as I've mentioned before, and they've actually come out with a new version of Azrock Polychrome. So I'm going to install and test that and throw something up on screen to inform you guys if that has been fixed. But again, it's, it's a very new graphics card and maybe they're trying to sort through some issues. So are we giving them the benefit of the doubt? Let me know in the comments below. So then the next issue that I have is back over to the main section. If we say select all channels, we have the ability to link the graphics card and the memory right here. And if we unlink them, which takes an annoyingly long time. I'll show you what happens if we go into the effects. So at the moment, we're controlling everything connected to the motherboard. So the RGB strips, the fans, everything. So if we change this onto CRAM, you'll see that everything gets updated to the CRAM effect. Now we don't have, if we go back over here, the ability to link the graphics card or the memory anymore. Now the reason being is because the graphics card and the memory in the linked effects, they don't support this specific effect. So if we go over to breathing, you'll see that we get access to those again. Now that's very unclear from a user perspective and I actually struggled to figure out what was going on. I thought the application had forgot that my memory and my graphics card existed. But the problem was that I had no way of knowing that the effect that I was currently on was not supported by these devices. Now the correct implementation for that would be if I hover over one of them, it would then tell me that this effect is not compatible with linking one of these devices. Otherwise, I just don't know that. And I'm sure many users don't know that and think that it's broken, but it's actually how the software works. But interestingly enough, you do actually have access to the CRAM effect in the graphics card. So why can't I link it and have that linked? Like if the motherboard supports it and the graphics card supports it, why can't I link them together so that they both support it simultaneously instead of needing to set them independently from one another? And another weird thing when it comes to effects is you have speed control right here. Now, again, we're controlling everything connected to the motherboard, not the memory and not the graphics card. But if we say choose an effect that we can link the graphics card and the memory to, you'll see what just happened there. If we deselect them, we get speed back. If we select either one of them, we lose speed. Why? Like, honestly, why? 
And talking about speed control, here's something that I think really should just be changed. And it's, it's not really that important and it's not going to affect too many people, but there's just a right way and a wrong way to do things. When you move this speed control, you'll see it's updating on every movement when I adjust the value. And what that should be is actually when I release the click, as in I adjust the speed, release the click, and then it will reset the effect. That's the correct way to implement something like that which is actually how they have implemented the color control. You'll see it doesn't adjust anything until I release the click. I don't understand why you would do on value change for one of them and then on click release for the other one. But in terms of the color wheel, I actually like how you can set the colors. I find this actually really quite intuitive. The only things that I would like to see is being able to set the RG and B values, as well as being able to set a hex color code value. I think that would be a good implementation if you want to be really granular about the colors within your system. And speaking of granular control, one thing that I really do love about Azeroth Polychrome is that you can set the amount of LEDs within a connected device. Now you'll see here, you'll see that I'm adjusting how many LEDs are going to span within that effect. And that means if say like I go over to the cram effect, you'll see that the effect will actually span all of the daisy chained fans. But if I adjust this up to say 80, it will span further than the fans. And you'll see that here as there's a delay between reaching the end of the fan and then resetting the effect because it's actually spanning more LEDs than we actually have. But the one thing that I don't love is that I cannot enter a number in here. Like it forces me to actually go all the way down. If I want to go all the way down to one, I am waiting several seconds when all that I needed to do was press one and enter. Like that really shouldn't be that difficult. And then the last section that I want to show you guys is the memory section. Now, all of these effects actually look like they're the same effects within the Trident Z Neo RGB software. So I think it's maybe pulling that from some sort of ROM on the memory. But the thing that I don't like about this drop-down box is the click target. I have to go all the way over to here before it will then activate. That entire thing should be a click target. Again, it's just odd implementation. And I really would like to see an implementation of speed control as with everything else within this software and also direction control because you'll see the comet effect is going upwards. And I would actually prefer that if that was going downwards. And it would be really nice to be able to say toggle and flip the direction. So like last time, what I'm going to do is give you guys an overview and my opinion of the effects within Azeroth Polychrome here in this video. But if you did want to see all of the effects in much, much more detail, then I have good news for you. That video will be uploaded on the Tech Lens Behind the Lens channel. And I'll have that linked in the video description for you. As I mentioned before, this is purely because of viewer retention and managing time on this platform, but it's still an important video that many of you guys value. So I will have that linked in the video description. But ultimately, what do I think of the effects? Well, of course you have your standard ones like static, breathing, cycling, etc. But where things get a little bit more creative is in the midsection right here. And it's obvious that somebody has actually taken the time to think about some unique effects and their implementation, with a couple areas that ASRock truly does deserve credit. Because you can set the LED count of a connected device, basically all of the effects look good on both daisy chained RGB fans and RGB strips at the same time. And you can set both the speed and the brightness control with immense precision and granularity. With my two favorite effects probably being Cram and Rainbow, because the rainbow effect here is a chased rainbow, with different colors having different speeds, making the effect look significantly more beautiful than a standard per LED cycle. And on top of that, you rarely get harsh stepping and the transitions between different colors and opacities are visually smooth, even with the lowest speed setting on the breathing effect right here. And although you don't get any specific game base effects, you do get a music effect that actually does react in time with the beat. Although for some reason, you can't change the color for the music effect. And overall, the lighting does look premium, mostly because the features are well implemented when they work. So in conclusion, Asrock Polychrome's problem isn't its effects. It's mainly with device detection, weird usability quirks, and usability failures. And although the design of the application isn't as clean or as modern as I typically like, I don't specifically have a problem with it either. So if you're looking for a motherboard and RGB is your deciding factor, Asrock Polychrome does absolutely need a little bit of work, but it's not a definite no either. And if you're willing to fight with it just a little, while Asrock hopefully fixes some of the issues, you'll likely be happy with the end result. So get subscribed, make sure that you don't miss our analysis of other RGB software and if I haven't answered any question that you might have please comment them below and I'll do my best to include it in future videos within this series. Otherwise if you're looking for something else to watch why not check out the RGB Explain playlist where all of these videos actually live. I'll have that linked right there for you. Otherwise guys don't forget a like is always appreciated. I'll see you in the next one.